All right, welcome everybody. In this video, we will continue our exploration of quantitative data by taking a look at box plots. How do we create them and how do we read them? And so these materials that we're looking at right now, this is a collab notebook. I will put the link to this notebook in the description of the video below. Um, so you can open up this notebook and run the code and follow along with what we're doing in this video. Um, but we're going to work with the STORMS data set from the dplyr package, which is a huge data set of North Atlantic storms. Um, we've seen this data set in the past. Um, the variable that we'll be focusing on in the STORMS data set is the quantitative variable wind, which is going to give us the wind speed in knots for each observation in the STORMS data set. Storm's data set lives in the dplyr package. So the first thing we need to do is load that library. This loaded correctly. We don't need to worry about um, that message. And uh, we've already seen one way that we can represent his, um, this data, which would be with a histogram. Um, and so I'll put a link to the previous video where we talked about creating and, and reading histograms. Um, but running this line of code, the, the basic command is hist we get a nice looking histogram here, which gives us one way to visually represent uh, the wind speeds of the storms in the storms data set. Uh, another very popular common way of representing visually quantitative data is using what's called a box plot. Um, so we'll take a look at exactly how to read box plots, but if you're curious about how to create them, um, very similar to histograms, we just change the name of the function from hist to box plot. Um, but we're going to run box plot and then we input the vector or the, the column where the quantitative data is. So in this case, that is in the wind column and out comes a box plot that looks like this. So this is kind of the default. I haven't specified any options. And so this may look familiar to you. You may not have seen these before. Um, if you've just come to figure out how to create a box plot in our, well then mission accomplished, that's how you do it. But more importantly, I wanna make sure that everybody is able to read these box plots and understand what information is being conveyed in a box plot. And if you are curious about all of the various options that you can use, you can always run the, the help um, command to, to get the help documentation for box plot, which talks about all of the various options, but We'll take a look at some of them in an example in a moment. So let's think about how we can read a box plot such as this. And before we take a look at all of the, the wind data, let's just take a look at a smaller data set. So imagine I've got this data set that I'm calling X. And X is a vector of all of these values. So there's 11 different values in this data set. Um, so just keep in mind when Colab is, is displaying the output, it puts a dot here um, to separate values, which might look like multiplication, um, but it's really just like a comma separating the different values. So we have these 11 um, different values and creating a box plot is, is gonna be very similar to how we talked about finding the median value of a data set. So if I wanna identify the median value of this data set X, I could sort the data from smallest to largest like I've done over here. And then the median is going to be the value that divides this data set in half. So notice there are 11 values. Five of them are over here. Five of them are over here. And so the middle value, 12, is going to be the median of this data set. And we can verify that with the median function. So when we have a small amount of values like x, we can do these things by hand, by eye. When we have a really large data set, clearly we're going to want to use built-in functions in R to find these values for us. So the median, um, this is the value so that 50% of the values in the data set are less than the median and then the other 50% are greater than the median. So if we're describing our probabilities in terms of percentages, then we would say the median is the 50th percentile because 50% of the values are less than it. If we describe our probabilities as decimals, um, then we would say the median is the 0 0.5 quantile. 
and um, other kind of special quantiles that have kind of special names and special notations, and in particular, special meaning in box plots are what are called the quartiles. So the 25th percentile of a data set is called the first quartile, and it is denoted Q1 with the subscript one. And so in R, there's a built-in function that's called the quantile function. And we just input the vector of values, and then we indicate the probability, what quantile we're looking for. So this would re um, return the 25th quantile, which is what we call the first quartile. Okay, and that's denoted Q1. So if the median divides the data set into two equal halves, the 25th percentile, the first quartile, is going to divide that lower half into two equal halves again. The third quartile, um, that's denoted Q3 with a subscript 3, and this is the 75th percentile. And we skipped the second quartile, and that's the median that, that we've already discussed. Um, and then we have what's called the interquartile range, which is the distance from the third quartile Q3 to Q1, which is the first quartile. So it's the distance between Q3 and Q1. And we can interpret this as like the distance between the middle 50% of the values. And in R, we have a nice built-in function to calculate an interquartile range of a variable, and that would be the IQR. So the five number summary, the box plot is a graphical representation of the five number summary. And so the five number summary consists of the minimum value of the data set, the first quartile, the median value or second quartile, the third quartile, and then the maximum value. So those are the five values in the five number summary. And in R, there's a built-in function that can calculate the five number summary for a given set of values, and that would be the function five num. Okay, so let's return to our kind of smaller example where X was this vector that had 11 values in it, which I've sorted down below. We identified that 12 was the median value because it divided the data set into two uh, equal halves. So the lower half of these five values, um, the first quartile is going to be the value that divides that in half again. So in this case, that's going to be this value seven that divides the lower five values into two equal halves. And for the third quartile, we take a look at the upper half of the values and we identify the midpoint of that um, half of the values which in this case is the 15. And so um, this we can verify with the five number summary function. And what happens is these five numbers divide the data set into four equal parts. Okay, so let's take a look at the full storms data set. And this question is asking me to find the five number summary for the storms data set of, for the wind speeds. So the function that we would want to use is the five num function again. And now our input is just going to be the wind vector. Um, so storms dollar sign wind. And um, here we get a five number summary for wind speeds. And how we can interpret these five numbers again is this five number summary divides the full data set of all wind speeds into four equal parts each part containing one quarter of the values, 25%. So between these two numbers, 10 and 30, are 25% of the values. Between 30 and 45 are the next 25% of the values, and so on. So between any two consecutive pairs of numbers in the five number summary, one quarter of the values uh, lie, 25% of the values lie and so we can represent this visually with a box plot by drawing, if I want to align my box plot horizontally, I'm going to put five bars, one at each value in the five number summary. And then I'm going to make a box between Q1 and Q3, representing the middle 50% of the values. 
So that box, that's the middle 50% of the values and it's, it's width is represented by the interquartile range. That's the distance from Q3 to Q1. And we've got this bar in the middle of the box, which is corresponding to the median. And then I can just draw whiskers out from the box to the minimum value and to the maximum value. And here's an informal box plot for the wind speeds. And we've got roughly, well, not roughly, we have 25% of the values that fall in between each of these lines that we drew for each of the um, values in the five number summary. Compare our picture with what we would get out of R using the box plot function. Um, so here I've got the box plot function, um, creating a box plot of wind like we did earlier. And I've changed kind of the labels, the main label on the axes. And um, one thing I've chosen to do here is to align this horizontally with the horizontal option. The default that we saw above is that it made these box plots vertical. Um, either way it is fine. Um, but this box plot looks like this. Um, and it looks a little different than the box plot that, that we created. So um, if you were just looking for the gist of how to read box plots, I think our mission is accomplished, but if you're kind of curious about what's going on with these dots that we didn't have in our box plot above, well, we can kind of get into the nitty gritty in the last couple minutes to talk about how we classify outliers in box plots. And so that process proceeds as follows. So um, we go ahead and we draw our vertical lines at Q1 and the median and Q3 but I don't necessarily draw two vertical lines at the minimum and the maximum values. Before I do that, I calculate what are called the upper fence and the lower fence. And so these are gonna be kind of benchmarks that we're gonna use. Any value that is above the upper fence, that's gonna be considered a outlier, a large outlier. And any value that is less than the lower fence that's what we're gonna consider an outlier on the low end of the spectrum. And if you're um, curious about how we can calculate those values, let me um, answer this question by, by adding a code cell. So this question is asking us to calculate the upper and lower fences for wind speed. So in this code cell that I added, I added some notes that we're gonna calculate the upper fence, which again is defined as the third quartile plus 1.5 times the interquartile range. Um, here's how we define the lower fence. And then I'm gonna print out the upper lower fences and the max and the min values so that we can figure out um, whether or not we have outliers in this data set. So um, the third quartile, I'll just save this as Q3. Remember, we can find this using the quantile function and we are look, working with the wind variable in the storms data set. And for a uh, third quartile, our um, quantile should be 0 .0, um, sorry, 0 0.75. And for the first quartile, it's the same, except now we've got a, a quantile for 0.25. And then the interquartile range, we could calculate that from Q3 and Q1, um, or we could use the built-in function in R, which is interquartile range. And um, now that I've got Q3 and Q1, um, and let me actually just store this in something that I'm gonna call um, IQRN, just to separate it from the function, which is called IQR. And so this should calculate the upper fence, Q3 times 1.5, the interquartile range, Q1 minus 1.5 times the interquartile range, and then using the max and the min functions, we can compare all of these values. And um, what I can see is over here, the upper fence is at 117.5, whereas the maximum value is 165. So any value greater than 117.5 is gonna be an outlier. Um, and that we can see from the plot that we had above. So this over here is at like the 117.5, all of these values that are greater than it, the upper fence are gonna be outliers. And um, since the lower fence is a negative value, 
um, it is smaller than the minimum value. So we don't have any values below the lower fence. Our box plot is going to stop at the minimum value over here. So we don't draw a line at the lower fence. We draw a line at the minimum value. And we can see we don't have any outliers on the lower end. Okay, so that is a wrap on box plots. Thanks, everybody.